Hello. Uh, today, we are taking your help back with me, Wendy Lo. Mahalo to Think That Hawaii for making this possible. Today, we shall be, be discussing a painful topic that many folks experience, and that is pain. What can we do about it? Today, I have Dr. Charles Sun, who will be sharing a little bit about how they deal with pain and some options that may help you. So welcome, Dr. Charles Sun. Thank you so much for having me, Wendy. It is an honor. Thank you. And I know your schedule is very busy, but we just want to get some information out there. So people suffering, and there are many people out there living with pain, suffering with pain, and probably in denial. So we want to make it as comfortable for them to know that there are alternatives. All right. So let's just get started. What is regenerative medicine? So regenerative medicine takes advantage of the fact that you know, these, these cells in our joints, for example, for joint pain, these are living cells and they are able to heal and replicate and regenerate, right? And so this field of medicine takes advantage of that on ways to allow healing to take place in an area that doesn't have access to it. And so that's, um, that's pretty neat because your body can, in theory, I know that your body can heal itself if you know what you're doing, if you're giving it the right tools and you're doing the right things. Um, and so that's why I was very excited to hear about this procedure and to let others know that, yes, when your body has pain, it's speaking to you. When your body speaks to you, what do you need to do? You need to listen. And so we need to address the problems. And that's what you're here for. You're going to do the exploratory, you'll find it, and then you're going to help your body to heal. So what? I know you're using stem cells. So what are stem cells? So stem cells are these premature cells that are able to turn into and replicate into other types of cell. You see, uh, you know, something like arthritis, for example, you know, um, a lot of people suffer with arthritic pain. It's a deterioration of cells, cartilage cells primarily, leads to damage to bone, tendons, ligaments. And so we're talking about introducing these premature cells that are able to turn into the very cells that are deteriorating inside the joint. So are you telling me that you can pull from the body its stem cells and bring it out and then put it back in to help to restore the cells that were damaged? Exactly right. So everybody has to have uh, stem cells to be alive. It's just they serve a very specific function in the body currently. And, you know, uh, parts of most parts of our bodies actually don't have access to them. So that's what this field of orthobiologics is about is to isolate healing properties, molecules and cells directly from the patient. We concentrate it down and introduce it directly into an area that doesn't have access to it. So I, that you're really proving the point that your body can heal itself because you're taking healthy stem cells and uh, reintroducing it back into the body to help the ones that were damaged. Correct? Exactly. You're right. Exactly right. Wow, it sounds all too simple, <laughs> but you've got the magic, you've got the techni uh, technology to do so. Um, is there, are there other natural ways to do this besides a procedure like what you're going to share with us? Is there a natural procedure for this? Um, a natural procedure. Now, the pr procedure we do to extract the stem cells, it is minimally invasive. You know, the, we used to actually do full on anesthesia where the person is not conscious, but the anesthesia itself was a bigger risk to the patient than the procedure itself. It's a very safe procedure. So, yeah. um, yes, I mean, the whole reason why this exists is because, for example, when you take supplements, right, you see our joints are avascular. There is minimal blood flow to it. And so when you take a supplement, it goes into your bloodstream. I mean, and since your joints don't have access to it, they don't, they, that also means they don't have access to the stuff uh, that's in the supplements. Mm -hmm. I see. Wow. So it may, you know, the more we're going to talk, the more it makes sense. So the more people will feel comfortable, the more they'll be um, walking in your door and asking you pretty much the same questions you're answering right now, but they're going to hear it live again from you. And then they can start the healing process. Because as I said, many people are in denial of pain and what they're going through. And then they're going to be doubtful about procedures. And then, so once you educate them and make them feel comfortable about that, then um, I think we can help them to heal. 
because it's all a, it's a process, right? They don't just walk in and say, hey, doctor, heal me, get me done, and I'm out of here, right? It's a procedure sometimes right, for others, right? So stem cells, can you discuss the two key properties of stem cells? Uh, one is they are able to reproduce and replicate themselves, make identical copies of themselves, which plays a huge role because that means that we're able to do these procedures as many times as we need to without any long-term consequences, right? Because they will be able to just replicate, replicate themselves. And the second biggest thing is, well, without, I won't get into too much detail about the, the, the different types of stem cells, but generally speaking, stem cells are able to turn into other types of cells, right? So your heart cell versus your muscle cell versus your fat cell. They all have different functions and structurally they are different. And so we're talking about these premature cells that can turn into any other type of cell. So the applications for this are limitless. I mean, you know, doctors are now able to regenerate heart cells when someone has a, a heart attack, right? Same thing with nerve cells. And when someone has a stroke, it's just, we have the focus on joint rejuvenation. Wow. This is so exciting. Anytime we can learn, especially about our body, how simple, but yet how um, intricate our bodies are. And I just keep saying that your bodies can heal itself. You're just doing, you know, helping it to heal. Uh, and I'm so, so excited that I found you. You speak my language. <laughs> so how is your or this approach different than what's already existing? Yes, it is also our job to know what the options are uh, and what the patient has as far as options go. The standard approach to, to this, something like joint pain and joint arthritis usually is physical therapy first, then something like a corticosteroid injection, which does a great job of pulling the inflammation down temporarily. But research has shown over and over again that it actually speeds up damage, the damage process, right? Um, for certain joints, there are these lubricant injections called hyaluronic acid injections, which it does create the lubricant, um, uh, does provide that uh, temporarily as well. And then after that, if that, it doesn't work, then we are looking at surgery. Now, the way this is different is because corticosteroids, the lubricant injections, it doesn't do anything to address the damage itself, right? So regenerative medicine is different in that we're talking about allowing a joint to heal. You mentioned, Wendy, you know, our bodies have this amazing healing ability, and I see it every day, right? Someone has a, a, a flesh wound, let's say have a, they have a nasty cut on their arm. It doesn't matter how deep the cut is, it heals. It's just that our joints don't have access to these healing factors. So that's simply put, that's what regenerative medicine is, is we isolate that healing ability. We concentrate it, put it inside the joint. Wow. Well. I mean, we have to get this word out because there's so many people suffering, the young as well as the old. And uh, surprisingly, a lot of young are suffering joint pain, back pain. You know, their their needs or just even somebody has a fall and they just never heal properly. And so their bodies need to have the right tools to heal. And I'm going to keep saying that because your body can heal itself. So what are the benefits of regenerative medicine? Benefits. Uh, I mean, the number one thing is these procedures. Procedures are extremely safe, right? Uh, compared to some of the things that uh, other things that are done out there, um, there is, technically speaking, there is no downtime. Um, you know, you don't have to be bedridden for a period of time. Um, there are certain precautions that we ask the patients to take uh, just to minimize risk for any type of re-injury as the joint is healing. Um, we're talking about no medications, right? We know that these medications have harmful side effects. Um, and of course, a lot of people call us and tell us, you know, my surgeon's telling me I need to do this surgery, do a new replacement or fusion or whatever it is. I don't want to do that. Is this going to help me? And those are the patients that we help. Um, there is a definitely a time and place for surgery. We sometimes have to refer patients out for surgery as well, but we believe that that should be the last resort. Exactly. And I feel that as well. I mean, 
I'm doing everything in my power to educate people and even myself on self healing and surgery is the last resort. You know, like you said, I mean, so, so excited. So what are some of the joint conditions that you have worked on? Oh, wow. Um, knees are by far the most common, uh, knee arthritis, meniscus issues, um, Low back is also very common, degenerative disc disease, uh, which can lead to things like sciatica, right? These nerve uh, symptoms that shoot down the lower extremities. I mean, we see everything from hips, shoulders, even thumbs, wrists. I mean, anywhere there's a joint, we are able to, well, we can see what we can do about that. And so have you noticed that um, the patients are getting younger? Or are they still the middle to older age generations that are having joint conditions? Do you notice that uh, your patient uh, load is getting younger? You know, I'm not sure if I've been doing this long enough to kind of notice that kind of trend. Uh, okay. I think my average age group, um, probably in between 55 to 65, um, right around like 50 to 55, I might feel about like when patients are start to no starting to notice okay, I'm, I'm now unable to do these things that I used to be able to do before. But my youngest patient is 18 years old. Uh, she had a knee injury from soccer. And my oldest patient is 101. And she is, she's got the best sense of humor. She's, she's doing great. Wow. <laughs> what a range. What a range. And, you know, I'm going to come back to you after you've been doing this for like 50 years or something and ask you, Hey, Doc, when you first started, you told me it was from 18 to 101. What is, you know, and you're probably going to share with me, your patients will be getting younger. And I can almost tell you that that's the, the trend these days. But you're going to have to put in the time to give me that answer. <laughs> so can you share with us what do your patients say to you when they first meet you um, as you are consulting with them? Yes, uh we touched on this briefly. One big thing that we hear is they're telling me I need a knee replacement, a hip replacement, these invasive surgeries. And a lot of these people, uh, they are really turned off by that idea. I mean, it is scary, right? I mean, somebody's cutting into your spine and fusing your spine. Yeah, that's a very scary thing. Uh, there are many patients that come and see us and they are more proactive uh, joint care. Right. Um, I know what stem cell therapy is about. I've heard of it before. I'm just starting to notice aches and pains and stiffness in my joints. And I want to get a hold of it before it gets bad. Um, and unfortunately we have on the other end of the spectrum as well. You know, they say, I can't walk anymore. Uh, I, I you know, stairs are very diff difficult. I'm gaining all this weight because I'm unable to move. And now I'm diabetic and you see, it's. When, when a, especially a weight bearing joint is affected, it's no longer just a joint problem. It's, it's an overall wellness type of problem because the patients are unable to move the way they're supposed to move. Right. Well, so, um, just off the cuff, what are the success rates for regenerative, um, procedures? Success rate. Now that is the very short answer It is it's excellent. I mean, I never get tired of seeing the results. Now, everybody has a different definition of success, right? Um, let's talk about, you know, for example, the 18 year old patient and the 101 year old patient. If my 18 year old patient, if she can't run full speed after getting this done, that's not success. If she's 18, she should be able to do whatever she wants to do after she's finished. And she's able to do just that. Uh, my 101 year old patient had a very practical or realistic expectations, if you was, she said, I don't even expect this to make my pain go away all the way. I just want to be able to sleep at night. And lo and behold, she never complains about her knees anymore. And she's even walking a lot better. Wow. And that's how it should be. 101 year old living in pretty much health, you know, being able to walk. And when we go to heaven, it's because we're old and 101 is really not that old. And she, she has some years left. And especially with the help from you, because we all know that when, when living with pain, pain causes disease. And so by taking that away from her, her quality of life shoots up, her smile gets bigger, her family around her 
love her even more because now she's back to being you know grandma and that's what we want we were a uh, quality but, life that's that's what it's about right exactly what it's about and that's why we've got to start now listening to our body when it when it aches and pains um we listen and we consult people like you doctors like you that can help us address what's going on and of course 101 year old that's a lot of wear and tear uh, on your body for all those many things and years that we demand so much of it. So, you know, that she's asking you for help and that you may are able to just eliminate some pain. Touche and congratulations, doctor. <laughs> Job well done. <laughs> so what are some of the commonly asked questions from your patients? Oh, uh, does it hurt? <laughs> That's a very, very common one. Um, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say it's completely painless, um, but it's it sounds a lot more intense than it actually is. Some people say uh, it's uncomfortable. Some people have told me, look, I didn't feel anything at all. So most people fall right in between that range. You know, no one's on the table like, get it out of me. You know, no one's like that. So um, most people do pretty well with that. Uh, Louis commonly asked questions. Um, oh, how long does it last? That's another common one I get. Now, I always encourage my patients to look at it this way. You know, 30 years ago, your joints, your knees, your low back wasn't like this. But there are a number of different factors that play a role in your joints presenting the way they do today, right? So that is why we create comprehensive programs where we go over strengthening, joint stabilization, Biomechanics is another big one is how we, how to use the joints, right? Up and down the stairs, carry things, pick things up from the floor the right way. Uh, weight loss, nutrition, see, these will all play a factor. So the answer, the, the answer is, I don't know because for someone who is 400 pounds and they are not very healthy, they have other medical conditions going on. They don't have strength. We don't expect the knees to last for the last as long for that person compared to someone who's active and fit. Right. Wow. Okay. That's fair enough. So what are the some of the comments? Not the question, what are the comments that your patients have after their treatment? I want to hear some stories or some testimony. Oh wow. Um I mean it really is a reminder every time. It's a reminder of why. I spent so much time, uh, you know, learning about this and doing this and continuing to make sure that these clinics improve. Um, I mean, we've, we've heard some, some, uh, some heart wrenching stories, you know, you've given me my life back, you know, I, I mean, we've, we're talking about patients that are able to stand up from a wheelchair or, you know, they're able to walk without a cane or a walker this and so you know um let's just say i get a lot of hugs during their uh <laughs> whatever bottle of... right like we have two uh, slides of two uh, men here and they um they, of course we have their quotes and everything on the slide uh telling you or telling us like wow doc thanks so much i will you a game of golf i mean like <laughs> you know, like, like what 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 do they say I mean, when they're done and they're walking and almost i would say that you would become almost pain-free you know, in some time. And um, I'm sure they're just very ultimately grateful. Right. Well, we like to aim for not almost pain-free, but <laughs> to be able to do what you want to do without any pain at all. Yeah. You know, that you read it. It's, it's not, that's not a realistic goal for everyone. Uh, the key is not with just joint care, but anything regarding health is you never let anything get too bad. You want to be proactive about your health and not reactive, right? So those are precise the patients that are able to do anything. You know, they're able to run afterwards versus if the joint damage is pretty severe. Um, I mean, we always go over with every patient before we proceed with anything. Make sure we're on the same page about, you know, what to expect going forward. You know, we can't look into the future, um, but we like to give our patients a prediction, uh, kind of, you know, where our minds are at and what we expect to see going forward. You know, um, a lot of patients, as I said, are in denial and they suffer and they just, they won't even tell their families 
that they're hurting, but they're hurting. How do you find these people? How do you find somebody who is chronically in pain and they just refuse to come in or learn? Or how do we get them there, Doc? Wow, that is that's a tough question. Um, you know, I mean, I think having a nice support system, um, you know, having the loved ones around you tell you, look, I want to do this with you, but you're, you know, you're going to be in pain doing it. I know that. So, you know, I mean, you're right, because when someone is in pain, you know, that affects their mental status, their mood, right? And that absolutely does affect people around you. So, you know, some people don't like to hear it, but I think it will be wise to kind of listen to those around you and just remember that they're saying these things because they care about you, right? right. You know, um, I, I keep saying, oh boy, you should hire me for your PR or your marketing because, you know, when I sit at the mall, wherever I go, I see somebody limping and I want to just go over there and give them a hug and say, hey bro, are you okay? And then there, and you know what, it's so funny because most times they'll sit and they'll talk to me and they'll tell me all their issues. And I'm like, you got to go see a doctor. Your blood sugar is too high. Your heart rate is too high or something, something. But, you know, and I can just direct them in any which way because they're talking to me, a stranger. And I say to them, hey, did you tell your son and your daughter about the pain they're experiencing? They said, no, no, no. no. They don't want to hear. They, they're too busy. And I'm like, I'm a total stranger. And they're talking to me. So I'm like, and I watch for people in pain and because I'm, and I'm all about helping people. So I'm looking and I, uh, I'm going to say, if you know this guy named Charles <laughs> and, you know, just to guide them to, to just get some, you know, a consultation and then get them comfortable in that direction that they don't have to live with this pain, you know, and maybe that's why their family members are not talking to them because maybe they're always grouchy and in pain. So we want to help them as much as we can in any way we can. So I have to ask you another question, Doc. You know, the patients that you see, you can see some of them are maybe overweight or too skinny or whatever, but do you ask them, ask them about their nutritional intake, their diets, and as, as far as how it's going to affect their healing? Absolutely. Um, we definitely go over the things that play a role in these things. And, you know, it's not like they don't know. They just need somebody to just kind of guide them through it, right? So, you know, we take them through a, a step-by-step -step process. I tell them from the get-go, look, this is going to be a journey. I will give you all the information you need to succeed, but ultimately it's you that has to use it. You're the one that has to go through, you know, the strengthening and burning of the muscles. And yeah, your muscles are going to be sore. You're the one has to go that has to go through that. But if you are willing to commit to that, I will take you step by step and we will do everything else for you. So um, it's definitely a wellness type of thing. And Doc, when you're telling them about the pain, because it, it would definitely be painful um, uh, because they're hurting to begin with and they're going to use these muscles, they're going to hurt even further. But you just got to keep enforcing and encouraging them, saying to them that when you feel this pain, it's pain leaving your body. If you don't do it and work your body, the pain stays within, and that's that's detrimental. But when you work out and your body's hurting, it's good pain. You're working to make it get out and to leave and never come back again. And so by doing that and investing the time into their body, then your job will be better and more successful because now they're ready to receive. You know, they already experienced the pain. And yes, no pain, no gain, right? I would like to clarify one thing, just so anybody doesn't hurt themselves out there. So there are right things to do. Um, for example, a knee or a arthritic knee and you're in pain, I mean, you shouldn't be squatting. There are things, I'm talking about, you know, muscle and tendon soreness after the strengthening is done. But while you are strengthening, if you notice pain inside the joint, that is not something that is recommended that you fight through, right? So that's why we go over the specific things that need, need to be done without causing further damage to the joint. Very good. And again, I'm 64 years old. A lot of my friends are all in pain and they're like, yeah, I'm like, I can't lie on camera. But a lot of my classmates, they're in pain. They're 
They're not walking. They're sedimentary. They're, they're sitting there on walker things. But how do we get them, wake them up and say, hey, you don't need to be like that. So I want to hear from you, Doc. Um, are there any stories about people about my age that are in pain and you've helped them and now they have a better sense of mobility within their lives? Oh, hundreds. We have already had hundreds of patients go through this. Like I said, 55 to 65 is definitely the most, our average age. And that's where the largest uh, patient demographics fall under. So, um, you know, that's right where I, I think you're really crossing over into um, kind of like the next chapter, if you would. That's when a lot of people retire and all they want to do is travel and enjoy retirement, right? And they're starting to realize I can't even enjoy retirement because I'm in so much pain. Right. So I, I get it all the time, you know, right. golfing, traveling, you know, exercising. Well, I, I got a lot of work to do because I have, I feel guilty that I didn't reach out to them earlier so they wouldn't get to this point. But now that I understand there are procedures out there that's not evasive and that can help them a better quality of life because I feel guilty sometimes when I'm out surfing them or the 20 year olds and you know and they're not and so I do feel bad but uh, I have been doing what you probably have what, what I've been telling me to do and I was just listening to my body and the pain so uh, Charles can you just share with us how how can someone in pain find your services oh there are uh, the easiest way to do it is give us a call at the office um, and the, the another way is email um, we're located at the Halepobala Medical Building at the corner of Bertania and Cheomoku. So feel free to, um, I mean, we don't take walk-ins just because the schedule is usually pretty full, but right. we will be right. more than happy to give you some information, uh, maybe give you some intake paperwork and also help you get, uh, get you scheduled as well. Uh, well, Charles, <laughs> our show has come to an end for now. I hope that we've helped people out there understand a little bit more about pain. And remember, when your body speaks, you should listen and find out what is the root of the pain. So I'd like to talk, uh, thank and mahalo to Dr. Charles Sun for making the time to share with us about how you can deal with pain. I am Wendy Lowell, and I'll return in two weeks with another edition of Taking Your Health Back. Aloha and mahalo to Dr. Charles Sun. <laughs>